guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Chris, and today we're gonna give you a glimpse inside my daughter eating watermelon. <laughs> Actually, not at all. We're gonna make a table today. We're gonna make a coffee table for her playroom. Actually, all of our kids' playroom. And to tell you the truth, it was gonna be an entry table to start, and it didn't work out that way. So, we show the mistake, we show the design change. So join us on this journey, and let's see how we did it. Project starts out by grabbing a piece of live edge cedar I picked up from a guy that lives about 50 miles away. Had a great deal on it, so I went ahead and bought a few pieces. This, I hope, is the first of many live edge pieces I will be making in the future. After drawing two parallel lines on either end of the piece, I go ahead and take this piece of cedar and lay it inside this panel cutting sled. I have a sanding block here, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wedge this sanding block you see there right in between the wood and the back of the sled, keeping that line exactly in line with the saw blade, just like this. Setting this piece up, pretty simple, and it keeps the cut really nice and safe. Simply repeat the process on the other side, taking my time, and the inside of this cedar is so beautiful. I, I honestly, I'm gonna bring you in here just a little bit closer because the colors that come out of cedar sometimes remind me of a lavender tulip wood of some sort. Honestly, looking at this, I can tell it's gonna be a beautiful piece and I can't wait to get some finish on it. Now this still has some mill marks on it, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run from 40 grit all the way up to 120 to 220, and at the end of this process with the random orbit sander, I'm gonna take that sanding pad and just hand sand the edges just to break the edges to make the piece a little more comfortable to hold in the meantime. You've probably noticed by now that this piece has quite a few voids and knots in it, so now it's time to go ahead and prep this for some epoxy. I'm gonna go ahead and tape it off where I want. I mix up a two-part epoxy here, and I pour it in just like so. A few sections of these are much deeper than I figured and it's sucking up quite a bit of epoxy here, but it all worked out in the end. With the epoxy poured and set aside to cure, I'm gonna go ahead and make my way to make these legs. I take some Baltic birch plywood, three quarters of an inch thick, and also I'm gonna make sure to rip them at three and a half inches wide. I then stack five pieces on top of each other with plenty of glue in between. And here's a quick tip. Take a, one of the standard squeegees and put a few bandsaw or hacksaw kerf cuts in it. It makes spreading glue on larger surfaces much easier. Essentially here, these pieces are five feet in length as well, and I need two of them bundled up together to give me four legs. So I'm simply gonna, once this is finished, I'm gonna cut those in half. It's the next day, the epoxy has had time to cure on the bottom, and I've taken the tape and retaped a few areas, and now I'm gonna pour some more epoxy to epoxy the top of the table. This can be a little bit tedious because you gotta wait a day, let it cure, wait again, but it's all worth it in the end because this produces such a beautiful result that you really can't get any other way. With the top set aside to cure once more, I go ahead and unclamp these Baltic Birch legs and they're looking pretty good. So over to the chop saw now to go ahead and cut them in half, giving me four pieces, roughly 30 inches in length. Of course, these legs are just too beefy on their own for the style of table I want to do. So six inches down from the top, I make a mark. I square it up. Then one and a half inches in from the side on the bottom, I make that mark again. I draw a line from the mark that is six inches down to the one and a half inch mark at the bottom. I turn the piece 90 degrees and I do the same thing. All right, so what the idea here is, is we're gonna make a taper. So what the first thing you need to do is, you can do this on the table saw, but I chose to do it on the band saw. So you take one cut, you glue or tape, you can use hot glue, you can use double stick tape. I use blue tape in this instance. You tape it back together, turn it 90 degrees, cut your other line, and when you take everything apart, look at that. You get a nice tapered leg. I take each piece now over to the disc sander. Now you don't need a disc sander to do this. You can simply do this with a random orbit sander or you can do it by hand, quite honestly. But my disc sander is set up with a more aggressive grit, kind of giving me uh, a leg up on getting that sanding process done much more quickly. At this point now, I take a router with a chamfer bit and I'm gonna go ahead and ease the edges as you can see here. Of course, I'm gonna ease the bottom of the feet too. This prevents any splitting when the table gets moved back and forth. Looks pretty good. So a little light sanding to break all the edges once more, some hand sanding to really polish it up nice. And as you can see here, it's coming together pretty good. At this point, I wanna let you know two design elements about these legs. One, I'm leaving the edges exposed, and two, I'm gonna really darken them up with some stain. But something happens the next day that makes me change my mind completely. Okay, so after all of that, I made these legs. They're actually too big, at least in my opinion. Uh, 
I'm gonna incorporate these legs probably into maybe an all plywood dining table in the future. So I'm not gonna use them for this project, however. So what I've decided to go ahead and use are some hairpin legs, very simple. This table was gonna be a hall table, but as it stands now, I think I'm gonna convert this into a, I don't know, let's see, an activity table for our kids' playroom. Let's do that. Hey, why not? Well, there you go, guys. There's the big mistake I had made. I didn't realize I had made those legs so big. I could have gone back and remade them a little bit smaller. It would have made the table a little more, more elegant, but however, I completely changed the look of this by putting some hairpin legs on that are roughly about 12 inches from the ground, and this is gonna be a coffee table, or like I said, like an activity table for my kids. Now, you're probably thinking, a live edge cedar table with epoxy inlay with hairpin legs, that's gonna be in a kid's playroom? <laughs> Absolutely. This thing is probably the most durable piece of furniture I'm going to have. And what better place for it than to be in a kid's playroom? And guys, check this gadget out. This is a lid that Rockler sent me that goes on top of a quart paint can or a stain can or a finish can in this instance. And you get it out like pancake syrup. How cool is that? All right, so let's talk about this finish for just a second. This is polyurethane that I'm putting on this table and it's specially formulated for flooring. I find that flooring polyurethane is tougher in the end and it's also a little bit more forgiving as you apply it. As you can see here, you simply apply it with a brush, you let it cure overnight. I recommend overnight because it gives you a better result. Now, I've sanded with 220 with a random orbit sander at a very light pressure and then by hand at 320. I then take some mineral spirits and wipe up the dust. I simply repeat this process twice. What you see here is me applying the third coat of polyurethane. At this point, each additional coat you apply, I like to work away from me and towards me and keep a wet edge along the entirety of the piece. So as we're finishing up this week's project, I would like to thank my first ever video sponsor, OLPR.com. They were gracious enough to reach out to us and send us a shop apron. This very heavy duty leather and canvas shop apron has come in handy this whole entire project. Everything from my writing utensils to squares to tape measures, being at arm's reach, I didn't really know what I was missing actually until I had it. I'm gonna link down below where you can find an apron such as this, and also I'm gonna link their website down below where you can check out their vast array of leather products as well. OLPR.com, thank you guys so much for reaching out. Thank you guys for supporting us, and let's get back to the build. All right, so check this out. As pretty as this looks, and as finished as this looks, you can still rub your hand on this finish and feel very slight imperfections. Little bitty bumps of bubbles or pieces of dust, you know what I'm talking about. So, I'm gonna show you a trick here to get this completely smooth, like glass. All right, let's get right to it. All right, so real quick, to make this, like I was talking about earlier, exactly like glass, there's a couple things you need. You need some shop towels, about three of them folded up into a square. You need some, 2,000 grit sandpaper, wet or dry, that's important. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna take the shop towels and you're just gonna fold this over, just like this, giving you a nice kind of soft surface, but still firm, yeah, when you push it. So, here's the deal. Water, okay? Just pour a little bit on there, not a whole lot. With the grain, Let's get to sanding right now. Okay, ignore me when I said with the grain. At this point, we have three coats of polyurethane on here and there is no grain anymore because what we're sanding is polyurethane and not wood. So after the third coat, we do that wet sanding technique and we put on one more coat of polyurethane and check this out. I just wanna give you guys a quick demonstration about just the shine that's coming off this thing even thus far. <laughs> check that out. Look at that reflection of that tree. You know, it warms my heart that this little girl can spend time with me in the shop nowadays. It's such a cool moment. Okay, back to the topic at hand, the finish. We're gonna take some mineral spirits here and we're gonna flood the surface of the table. At this point, you're gonna take that 2000 grit sanding pad and you're gonna lightly sand with the mineral spirits, adding a little bit more if you need to until you have a really smooth, absolute smooth surface. Okay guys, so we're in the home stretch here. Now, we have a glass-like consistency, but it's a little hazy. After that last 2,000 grit sanding with mineral spirits, I know it sounds crazy, but it works. We're gonna have to put one more coat of polyurethane on here. So I'm gonna use a thinned out version of 50% mineral spirits and 50% polyurethane, and we're gonna hand rub that on, put it in a dust-free environment, and then we're good to go. So let's get that done. 
And of course, I like to use my new favorite gadget, the pancake syrup dispenser for your polyurethane. I then have that mixture now. It's 50-50 mineral spirits and polyurethane, and I'm gonna go ahead and make my own custom applicator. This is a piece of t-shirt with a piece of shop towel on the inside, and I take it and I clamp it shut to give myself a little applicator here. And honestly, it's a little too tight. So at this point, I go ahead and take the clamp off and I just use my hand to apply it. And then I'm gonna go ahead and like I talked about earlier, put this in a dust-free environment and I don't think my wife's gonna mind if I take this table and put it in her salon. <laughs> yeah, it should be just fine. Now with that last coat of polyurethane on there, after it's dried overnight, now it's time to get the final test. So I moved it into the playroom and my daughter has gone ahead and put a cup on there I think she likes it. She seems to be fairly interested. You like it? Well, I don't know. <laughs> hey guys, thank you so much for watching. This project, well, it didn't work out like we hoped, but it actually turned out better than I could have imagined. This table, hopefully, is a family heirloom for these little kids for a long time to come, and I'm really happy how it turned out. Guys, if you want to watch more videos from us, there's going to be some over here. We always invite you to subscribe to the channel, and if you want to help support us on Patreon, we have a link down below. Also, thank you so much again for watching, guys. I really appreciate your viewership, and we will see you on the next project. Can you say bye? Bye. <laughs> see you later, guys. What's the line? What's the lion say? Why? That's right.